Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Fluke 45 dual display multimeter. And it's five and a half digits. 100,000 counts. And it's from about 1998. But look at the condition. It's nice and shiny and no scratches and all white and all that. Look at that. It's like never been used condition. How is that possible? I only had to clean a little bit here on the top. Some stickers. Let's show this. Look at that. How well I was able to clean this. Somebody put the stickers up here, some maybe calibration or some test stickers or department stickers or something like that. The only thing that I can find is a little bit yellow. Look at that little piece of plastic here. And the other one in the left side is much more yellow and it also looks like, see? Some shadow, some, something was in shadow, right? Look at that. <laughs> that is so funny. They exist in different versions. You can also get the IEEE version, but this one is serial only. So let's open and inspect. What a beautiful design and the layout and everything. It's just so, so beautiful. I really, really love it. And they try to make a super big and super good isolation distance from all the input system to the readout because all the readout stuff is connected to the serial port. Look at the white cable here. This goes to the serial port. And then um, we got some different options, the IEEE option and also the battery option. So this is why we have this big um, hole or room right there. Transformer is located far away from everything because all the sensitive inputs, they are up here. Nice little conductive shield around the analog input amplifiers and AD converters and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that transformer is, of course, a little switch mode power supply to drive all the input circuits. And that will be the optocouplers delivering the measurements to the readout section, where you've got a little microcontroller, an EEPROM with the software, and the really nice VFD display and a little driver for all that. And uh, there was a little note here. See, 1986. That'll be the layout design, John Fluke. So that is the display board, 86 it was. And then the main board is 87. I did not know it was that old because it's a really, really beautiful modern design. That is a little bit of a surprise because the manuals I can find, they say 98. Okay, and one and two. Okay, so it's just a two-sided board. But damn, this is beautiful. Yeah, of course, we have to take away this little shield box and uh, inspect what is all this analog stuff. Big, hefty fuse. Uh, this is funny, isn't it? The biggest fuse in the box, and it's called the Little Fuse, but that's just a company name, but I kind of like it a lot. There's only one little thing that I found that I was not super happy about. This uh, on-off switch here, it's quite long, and then it's bent, and then there isn't any support that goes this way. So this means when you push this, look what happens. It's not grabbing onto the contact, so you need to push it actually through all that way. See? And then it activates. 
because it bends a little bit. That is a little bit dumb. Instead of removing all this material, they could have made it, I mean, they could have made it so it would have been much more stable. See? Seems like it's difficult. You need to push it through the front. And it goes. The spring actually, see? It goes all the way out correctly. So it's, it has nothing to do with that. Well, well, layout, super beautiful. And that will be the little shield on the bottom as well. Yeah, let's try and remove the shields. Look at that here in the middle of the picture. What is that? It looks like remains from a an exploded capacitor or something. That is the weirdest. Well, well, better take that out. See? All the leakage, creepage, shielding, guard rings, all that stuff, because it's, of course, high impedance. And at that high impedance, you don't want anything affecting your readouts, because this is five and a half digits so that's a little custom chip by fluke it's doing all the yeah all the real smart things we got three of those cadoc resistors or maybe they're from another brand but they look like cadoc a little bit to me but those are reference voltage dividers and super super accurate and stable and there you got some relays to select between voltage and ac and current and so on right oh nice this current sense resistor see with a four point measurement technique for super accuracy so that means the solder points they're not a part of the measurement and that is important that is good thinking and that little additional board that is standing up here that is the rms or the ac voltage measurement and there's another little precision voltage divider here on the back of that one wow how nice so when they say conductive shield really Am I missing something? Because that will be a lot of mega ohms. I don't really see it's that well conducting. Well, let's uh, let's find something else that can measure a little bit more ohms. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Let's try in here. Let's try and move them real, real close. Still no luck. So I got another one, and this one will do giga ohms, where the other one only do mega ohms, and still no connection whatsoever. Huh. Conductive. So the first thing I did was to apply mains voltage, and uh, it's using 1.6 watts in idle, and that's because the mains switch is on the secondary side. And Oh dear, it's blinking. So here we go. I think I finally figured that out. So here is the voltmeter mode. And I think this is very close to 10 volts. And just to uh, verify the last digit here, I got something with uh, two more digits. Also monitoring the input voltage. And I think this is about what I really got. So this one is just reading out about one millivolt too many. <laughs> I mean, that is pretty much all right. So what I really, really like about this instrument, that is all this second, because it's a dual display. So let's pretend you're playing with a DC supply. And then you hit second and then 
I said, so, and then what kind of second? Let's say AC. So now you're monitoring the DC and the AC ripple at the same time. And I think that is really, really nice. Of course, you need to be able to do this. Of course, I should put on the, the cabinet and everything like that to get a little bit lower reading here. Uh, my DC supply here is a linear unit, so it should be very, very close to zero. But 0 0.2 millivolt AC RMS is also very, very low. You can do the, um, the second with a lot of different uh, things. And of course, not all things makes a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, I kind of like that. And you can change the resolution of things to get more or less uh, digits by change uh, by pushing the rate. So um, here we go much, much faster if you're changing something or adjusting something. Then of course you lose a digit, but now it runs really, really fast. Let's pretend that we will... Um, I can probably just move the voltage like that. Dibby, 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 dibby. See? And then it goes really, really nice and fast. Yeah, okay. We we'll also get some. You can, of course, get an extra digit in the millivolt meter like that. But we are already seeing all the digits that is available in the voltmeter. And then we uh, can remove second. Yeah. So I tried to measure a high value uh, resistor and of course there is very, very little signal left at this high resistor. So this is 100 mega ohms. So this is why it's a little bit uh, jumpy. Also, I got really long, I got a long cable as you can see here. And that is of course causing a little bit of disturbance, but it can actually measure 100 mega ohms. So that is really nice. I think that is more or less all I wanted to show in this video. So I hope you had a little bit of uh, fun and maybe I will see you soon again. Bye bye.